Let's go around the league a little bit more too. The Flames on the brink of elimination. The Avalanche have the 3-1 lead in that series. If the f- if if any Flames fans listening, if they were to lose and get eliminated, uh, Bobby it would mark the first time that the top teams of each conference go out in the first round. Is it feeling like a bit of a crazy? I mean, we always say anything can happen in the playoffs. And uh, this year in particular, I'm like, yep, now I know why Bob McKenzie does not do predictions. <laughs> because this is crazy if that ends up happening with the Flames as well. Yeah, it, it, it is feeling like that sort of year. And you see what Carolina is doing now with the 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 Washington Capitals. Um, so, yeah, it could be that odd year where, you know, it's, for, for lack of a better analogy, it's like a full moon. Everything's kind of different and off the table. But, um, um, you know, the surprise for me isn't that Colorado's, you know, beating Calgary. It's that it's been as lopsided as it has been. And that if you had told me at the beginning of the series that Colorado will be up 3-1, Calgary will be on the brink of elimination. And the reason, the only reason it's 3-1 and, and not, not 4 nothing for for Colorado is because Calgary's goaltending has been so good. Mike Smith has been so fantastic. And the only reason that that, uh, that the Flames are in such tough shape is because their number one line, specifically Johnny Goodrow and Sean Monaghan and Elias Lindholm, haven't generated much of anything at all. Um, I would have thought those two things would be reversed, that they'd be getting all sorts of offense from their number one line, and maybe their goaltending would be suspect, and it's been exactly the opposite. So it is kind of bizarre. But, I mean, outside of, you know, that's... So uh, Colorado ended up with, what, 90, 92 points, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, and the wings were 107. So that's a pretty healthy healthy uh, difference. So this does qualify as an upset. And there's no question that what the Columbus Blue Jackets did, especially the manner in which they did it to the uh, um, – uh, who did the Columbus beat? Well, why? Well, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Steve Eiserman's team. It, it was so yeah, quick the that Tampa we Bay forgot. Lightning. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say the Washington Capitals, but the um, the the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, you know, those are upsets, uh, and then obviously Colorado's hasn't gone the distance mm-hmm. yet. But if it does, that's an upset. Outside of that, I mean, you're hard pressed to point wise when you look at how jammed up the standings were. I mean, even Carolina and Washington, yeah, there's a difference, but it wasn't like, it wasn't crazy numbers. And uh, so I think that's the nature of the, the playoffs this year, where Tampa ran and hid from the rest of the league. Calgary was by far the best team in the Western Conference point-wise. But outside of that, everybody else's points are pretty compressed, and so the upsets are are a little less than what we would normally define as an upset. But... I- Outside of the Washington Capitals, who won the Cup last year, all the remaining playoff teams have either not won the Cup or not won the Cup for many, many, many years. Like, yep. this is the most open I can remember the Stanley Cup being. Yeah, and that makes it kind of fascinating on one level and maybe some people would say disappointing on another level because you always want to see, like, the best teams and, you know... Tampa would have been fun to watch uh, all the way, but I mean, Columbus was full value for the win. So mm-hmm. now let's let Columbus do what they're going to do and see. And and it's it's fascinating to see. You know, is Columbus going to be a one hit wonder here, or are they? Do they have this mojo and magic going so well now that they're going to be unstoppable? The same thing can be asked about the New York Islanders and the manner in which they dispatched the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, some of these quote unquote Cinderella stories. Even though the funny thing is, when I say New York Islanders Cinderella story, they had more points than the Pittsburgh Penguins. They were the higher seed, but because it's Pittsburgh and we're so used to what Pittsburgh can do in the playoffs with Crosby and Malkin, we we obviously default to that a little bit. But um, it'll be curious to me to see which one of these teams are going to be one and done and, and which one of them can, can have staying power in these playoffs and go the distance. It's going to be fun.